Good morning. morning. It is good to see you and a joy and a blessing be with you all. My name is Richard Mirage. I'm the lead minister here at Unity of Phoenix, and I just want to welcome you and thank you for being here today. Welcome, everyone. And I'm Reverend Tina Brown. I'm the spiritual education minister, and so blessed and happy to see you on this beautiful morning. And I'm Jimmy Scott, pastoral care minister. My pleasure to welcome you here as well. Our intention for this service is that you find that amazing spot within yourself. And so every aspect of this service has been put together today to help facilitate that process inside of you because each one of you is amazing. Amen. So our Unity of Phoenix has a mission. Uh, It is a mission. It is about what we stand for, about what we want to create, who we want to be. And it's really the mission of our entire community, which means it's every one of our missions together. So let us, with feeling and a sense of ownership, affirm our mission together. Unity of Phoenix is a loving spiritual community that welcomes all people and honors all paths to God. We are dedicated to transforming lives by inspiring and awakening individuals to discover God's spirit within them. Amen. Everybody take a deep breath in that. And open yourself to have an amazing experience of God. So now's that time in our service for a time of prayer and meditation. So if you have your cell phones with you, I want to encourage you to place those either on silence or vibrate. And Christian will lead us in our meditational song. So as we begin this process together this morning, I want to encourage you to sit back and relax. Take a deep, refreshing breath. Begin the mental process of clearing out all of the stuff in your mind and in your head. Just make that symbolical shift from your head to your heart. There is a presence and a power that resides deep at the core of our being. presence and that power creates a space for calmness and quietness, creates a space for healing, for overcoming. Creates a space for peacefulness. And it's also a gentle reminder that we are connected to all life. So that no matter what chaos or confusion is taking place in our external world, this sacred space at the core of our being is there to remind us that we have the capacities to solve all of our problems. We have the capacity to create solutions that serve for the betterment of humankind and all life. And we also have the capacity to deal with the personal issues that crop up in our lives as well. So 
So as we come together now to unite as one heart and one mind, let us do so from a space of sacredness and quietness and peacefulness. and love. So one more deep, refreshing breath. And for the next few moments, just rest in the silence and in the quietness of your own being. Today in our prayers we hold the thought of peace. Of abundance. Of prosperity. Of love and laughter and joyfulness. And we hold that vision for ourselves and for all people everywhere. We give thanks for all the blessings in our lives and in the lives of those whom we love. And we know that all is well. And so it is. Amen.
Morning again, everyone. Special shout out to everybody who watches us online uh, all over the United States, Canada, uh, the Netherlands, Abu Dhabi. We've got people tuning on all over the place. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. I appreciate it. So well, just, there was this woman who just got out of a really bad divorce, and she was still really angry, feeling she got ripped off by her ex-husband. And so one day she finds a genie lamp and rubs it, and the genie comes out and says, I'm going to grant you three wishes but here's the deal. Whatever you wish for, your ex-husband's going to get double. So she didn't really like this part of the deal, but she tried to focus on what she wanted. And she said, Jeannie, for the first wish, I want a mansion. I want a big house in Hawaii. And poof, she had a big house in Hawaii, and her husband got two big houses in Hawaii. Still not liking this too much, but trying to focus on what she wants. She said, Jeannie, for my second wish, I want $2 billion. And poof, she had $2 billion. Her husband, ex-husband, got $4 billion. And then uh, it's her, uh, she's getting really kind of angry, triggering all her upset again. And the genie said, well, this is the last wish, and this will remind you again, whatever you wish for, your husband gets double. And she said, yeah, yeah, I know. So she thinks really, really hard. And after two or three minutes, she says, I got it. Genie, for my third wish, I want you to beat me half to death. And so, <laughs> so all right. Why are the ladies clapping? I'm not really quite sure. What, uh, what is up with that? So how many people here have ever gotten really angry at someone else? Anybody ever get really angry at someone else? How many people have ever gotten so angry that you said something mean and hurtful or wished something terrible upon that person? Anybody? Every one of us from time to time gets angry. Angry is a very common uh, human, anger is a very common human experience. You know, when we feel disappointed or betrayed or lied to, if we feel diminished or humiliated in, in some way, it triggers some upset feelings in us that can lead to us feeling a level of anger. And for every one of us, anger is not a very pleasant or comfortable experience. It is not something we enjoy or want to feel in any way. And we so dislike and are uncomfortable with anger that in some ways, sometimes we're even scared of anger. Because we know that sometimes anger can go a little crazy. It can get very loud. It can get aggressive. It can get a lot of control. It can even get uh, a little bit violent. Anger is one of those subjects that we just don't like talking about, like death. We'd rather ignore it. We'd rather pretend it's not there. It's rather something we would rather enjoy. But in life, when we put any things into the darkness and hide, it can sometimes create even more problems. So one of the things I think it's always important to do is to bring these things into the light to get a better understanding, you know, to release some of the fear and the misconceptions we have so we can get a, a positive uh, experience out of it and learn how to handle it in a better way. I think one of the, major, some of the major issues that we have with anger come from some of the judgments and some of the false beliefs we actually have about anger. Here are four... Uh, false beliefs we have about anger. Um, number one is that anger is bad. It's not good. It's unhealthy. Well, the truth is that anger is a natural human emotion born out of the innate uh, physiological fight or flight response. That when human beings feel a threat of any kind, it triggers some fear and sometimes some anger. The fear is the physiological part, and the anger is the emotional part of some perceived, real or imagined, threat that we think about. And that's really not a bad thing. What is a bad thing is when we think that anger is bad to the point that we bury it. We deny it. We minimize it. We pretend it's not there. We, you know, we lie. We hide it in whatever way we can. Because what happens, because we think it's bad and we bury it, it stays there, and one day it just explodes. And that's when it's bad. The thing that makes it bad is that we think it's bad, and it leads us to burying it, and that sometimes has some very unhealthy results. Another thing about anger that's true, we think, is other people make us mad. Other people are the source of our anger. You know, I'm sure every one of us has probably said, you make me so mad. My kids.
kids just make me so angry. My boss gets me so angry. I think every one of us, you know, look what you made me do. We usually think these types of things that we think we get angry because of what someone did, what someone said, how someone acted. You know, every one of us has people who push our buttons. Everybody have people who push your buttons. Well, here's a little bit of uh, truth to that is while they push your buttons, they didn't install them. And um, <laughs> they came like we came pre-installed with them. So, so it's really not exactly the truth that um, people make us angry. A third one is that uh, anger is not spiritual. Spiritual people don't get angry. And that's just not true. As a part of the full human experience and the spiritual experience, a part of it is sometimes we, we, we get angry and we get upset. You know, sometimes you think, oh, if someone gets mad, they're clearly not spiritual, and that's just not true. You know, if you look at Jesus, there were times that Jesus got angry. Remember when the, the temple with the money changers, he flipped over the, uh, the, the tables? And I'm sure he did it in a very spiritual way, but he still got angry. <laughs> And, you know, he rebuked Peter, and with the uh, Pharisees, he had called them hypocrites. He got angry at the Pharisees. Remember when he healed a man on Sunday, and they were upset about him breaking uh, the Sabbath? So, so Jesus had that. And the truth is, again, it's not about uh, the anger. It's how we express it, you know, how we move through it. And, the, and to say that it's, it's not, no, we're always spiritual. Anger doesn't diminish our spiritual essence and, and our spirituality. It's a part of the full experience. It's how we handle it. And the fourth one is that we tend to think that anger is just, you know, yelling and throwing and the most extreme things, and that's just not true. Sometimes when people are quiet, they can be seething inside, and they're angry. Some people, when they're buried, they're angry. It comes out sideways with passive-aggressive behavior, and on the outside, it looks like there's no upset, but the truth is there's inner anger. The fact is, while we handle it in all different ways, every one of us experiences anger in some ways. We are just very uncomfortable with it, don't like to admit it, or don't even want to feel and, and process it. But the truth is, anger is one of the many complex of all human relationships. It's a part of being a, a human being. And that anger is, in some ways, it's the tip of the emotional iceberg. Because below the anger, there is some hurt. And below the hurt, there is fear. And if we can penetrate through the anger and through the fear, We'll get to the hurt of the thing that, that needs healing, and we can actually bring it into the light. In many ways, anger is a teacher. It's a cue, you know, to, for us to learn, uh, for us to heal, and for us uh, to, to, to open our hearts. It's an invitation uh, to the growth, of our spiritual growth, and, and, and to the evolution of our soul. And it really is a call to bring love uh, to ourselves and love into the situation. The key thing is we need to be willing to go deeper into our pain to go deeper into looking at our deepest fears and our hurts so we can bring a sense of wholeness uh, and healing to the entire situation. So this morning, we are talking about an uncomfortable subject. We are talking about dealing with anger. And dealing with anger... <laughs> Isn't that cute? Um, <laughs> One of the reasons we're talking about this is that people uh, recently have been asking me about difficult subjects, and we talked one about a few weeks ago, why do good things happen to bad people? Today we're talking about dealing with anger in the future. We'll also talk about dealing with difficult people because these are some of the key and challenging areas of our lives, and we need to ask ourselves, how can I bring in my spirituality in these situations to, to better handle it? So today what we're going to look at is how we can deal with our own anger, how we can deal to better understand and heal and to even grow through our experiences of anger. So the first thing uh, we need to do is to acknowledge, to observe, and to breathe through and allow the anger to pass through us and to, to experience it and not push it away. You know, so many times we don't want to we, we, we don't want to feel it at all. But what I've learned more and more as I study the psychology, if I study spirituality, I study Buddhism, I realize that any uncomfortable feeling we must mindfully observe and be con let, let it move through us consciously. That if we hold on to it or resist it, and you don't say well, what you resist persists, that when you try and fight it or resist it or deny it, it actually stays stuck in us. That when the anger comes, we need to just uh, accept it, breathe through it, acknowledge it, and let it pass through us. You know, I'm a guy who, I don't like getting needles of any kind. When I'm given blood, IVs, don't like it at all. And they always say, they got my arm there, they're just about to poke this very thick needle into my little vein, and then they say, oh, just take a deep breath and relax. 
I say, yeah, it's easy for you to say. But it, what I love about it is what they're saying is it's going to hurt, but if you take a deep breath and just breathe through the experience, it is actually less painful. And so that sometimes when we're going through anger, we just need to acknowledge, I'm feeling angry right now. This is what anger feels like, and I'm feeling it, and to just let it move through us. Anybody ever read any books by Pema Chodron? She's a Buddhist monk. She wrote a fabulous book called Living Beautifully. In it, she addresses how we should deal with feelings of anger, and here's what she says. Acknowledge the feeling. Give it your full uh, compassion, even a welcoming attention. Even if it's only for a few seconds, drop the storyline about the feeling. This allows you to have a direct and personal experience of that feeling, free of interpretation. Uh, don't fuel it with your concepts or opinions about whether it's good or bad. Just be present to that sensation and feeling of anger. Where is it in your body? Does it remain with you? Does it shift? Does it change? Because eventually it will subside, and when it does, then you have the option to make a new choice. And so one of the most important things about anger is don't think it's bad, don't push it away or deny it, acknowledge it and breathe through it and let it move through you because there's less residual effect of it. It won't get stuck in you and control you in subconscious ways. You know, there was a, a doctor and she had a stroke and her name is Jill uh, Bolte Taylor and she had some incredible insights in this stroke and she wrote a book called My Stroke of Insight. And as a doctor, a neurologist, she actually shared, she learned about uh, things about how the brain works. And here's one thing she learned. She learned that the structure, the physiologic structure of emotions lasts for only 90 seconds. Any emotion that comes to you, anger, sadness, whatever, has cycles of 90 seconds. And then it begins to just fall away and dissipate. And so anger rides a 90-second run in us when we get angry. But what she says is, is in that 90-second run, we lash out. In that 90-second run, we start telling ourselves stories about it, like how they did this to me, and they really did it on purpose. I knew she never liked me, and blah, blah, blah. We start just telling a story. And what we do is we extend the 90 seconds. With our storytelling and our judgment, we extend the 90 seconds. And she said, if we just let ourselves acknowledge, I'm angry right now, feel the angry, breathe through it, that there'll be less residual. And so you remember when they used to say, uh, if you get upset, count to 10? Well, apparently, it's when you get upset, count to 90. And so, um, so what she says is, when you get angry, don't judge it, don't feel ashamed of it, acknowledge it, observe it, and breathe through it without telling a story, without making up a story about it. Because what that does is that begins to build it up, and that's why the blow-ups happen. It's to regularly, I'm feeling angry, breathe through it, acknowledge it, and that it'll move through you with less residual effect, and those blow-ups will actually stop happening. And so this is a very powerful and important thing for us to do, is to not judge it, not tell the story, just feel through it. Because many of us can begin to memorize and tell that story that the 90 seconds become so frequent that, and you know by the law of attraction, the law of mind action, you begin to think anger and anger, and you, you become more angry. It doesn't help in any way. So the more we observe it, the more we breathe through it and regularly, we'll actually begin to diminish that level of anger in us. Even if we've had a pattern in the past, if we begin to just breathe it, acknowledge it regularly, we actually begin to release all the old stuff and, 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 and there's less residual effect. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay, cool. Here's the second one. It's, the second one is to move from the victim mode. You know, because when we think that they, what they said did it to me and so-and-so uh, did this and that, it, is that we really feel like we're a victim. They did it to me. You know, poor me. You know, they, you know, they victimized me. How unfair this is. And the truth is, that's giving our power away. You know, and so what we need to do is, is to not participate in calling ourselves a, a, a victim or thinking that they did it to us. So and one of the important questions to ask ourselves, just to explore, is to ask ourselves, where in my life am I feeling like a victim? Where in my life am I feeling victimized? And this isn't to shame ourselves, it's just to get to a greater understanding and awareness. You know, where in my life am I giving someone else, the, thinking what they said or did is affecting my happiness and, and, and peace of mind? And then the other question is, so is this the only way I can think about it? 
Is there another and better perspective for me to have? You know, and I think that's a very, very important thing. Because the truth is, we are more powerful than we realize. You know, sometimes we think that the, that the problem is outside of us, which means the solution is outside of us. But the truth is, the problem is inside of us, and the solution is inside of us. We just need to reclaim our power and to realize we have some amazing spiritual resources. Because the truth is, we're not victims, we're creators. We are amazing, powerful, spiritual beings that have been created in the image and likeness of God. That every one of us has been given dominion and authority over all things, and most importantly, are, are the quality of our thoughts. You know, we've been told we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So the fact is, you are a powerful spiritual being. Listen to what Ernest Holmes says. He says, the science of self-mastery is the science of being equal to everything that confronts you. There is nothing that is too great, nothing that is too big. There is no obstruction you cannot surmount if your concepts of truth is dynamic enough. The truth with which you deal is absolute in every respect. Always, all of God, all of truth, all of your spiritual power is always right here and now waiting for your recognition of it. You're not a victim. You're not weak and helpless. You're a powerful, amazing spiritual being who has the resources and the abilities to handle what is before you. When Jesus said, greater is he who is within you than he who is in the world, means that there is nothing, no anger, no comment, no action of any person is stronger than the Spirit of God in you. I am an amazing spiritual being. Together, I am an amazing spiritual being. I am created in the image and likeness of God. Together, I am created in the image and likeness of God. I have amazing spiritual power and amazing spiritual resources. Together, I have amazing spiritual power power and amazing spiritual resources. So we reclaim our power and our resources by identifying with the truth of who we are. I am an amazing spiritual being. And when you claim the truth of who you are, that also means you need to accept full responsibility for who you are. The truth is you are 100% responsible for your anger. I am 100% responsible for my anger. We are 100% responsible for our lives, for our feelings, for our reactions. And that is the truth. To, to accept your identities, to accept your full responsibility, because that's what reclaims your power and gives you access to all of the resources. I am responsible for my anger. Together, I am responsible for my anger. I am responsible for all areas of my life. Together, I am responsible for all areas of my life. So to me, that shifts our balance of power. It makes us realize we're spiritual beings, we have the resources, and when we accept responsibility, we begin to be willing to do the work to make the changes and to move through it. Because it's not outside of us, it's within us. The problem isn't outside, it's within. And the solution isn't outside, the solution is within. So one of the things is when we do that, and, and we begin to allow it to, to, to move through us, we, begin, we need to like name and own what we're angry about. You know, to, to name and, you know, whether we're speaking it or journaling it, to say, I'm angry. I'm feeling upset. I feel diminished. And, you know, a, a lot of psychologists and, and, and therapists say that sometimes you got to get something physical with it, like you take a, a kitchen towel and you smack the counter and say, I am angry, and you kind of get it all that way. Because sometimes to get it out emotionally, sometimes you got to do some work physically. People like to run and punch bags and do stuff. So there is actually some sense in that. But the thing, and, you know, so whether it's journaling or speaking, getting it out, releasing it is important. But I just want to say that there's a difference between letting it out and taking it out. And um, anybody ever, uh, you know, you've gotten a little argument with somebody and then you decide you want to, like, give them a piece of your mind. You want to kind of let them have it and let them know what you're feeling. And, um, and, and it didn't help or it made it worse. Anybody ever have one of those? You kind of go back for a sip and dip. And, and that is because we haven't done our work yet. It is because we pretend that, that, you know, that, that, that we're venting or we pretend that we want to heal it. And really what we want to do is punish them and give them, give them a piece of our mind. You know, and it's really not a very, a, a very a centered place. To want to kind of let it out and take it out on people and, and give them a speech or lecture or prove them wrong and make us right is really a part of our, and, and be controlling and blow up, that's, that, that's a part of our masculine energy. It's unlightened, uh, unlightened um, masculine energy that we've got. 
you know, and, 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 it's, and it speaks to a lack of spiritual and emotional maturity. So that's not a great thing because all anger, guess what? It's about us. It's about our stuff, our process, our growth, our soul work, our transformation. You remember when Jesus, they talked about this guy, and he said, you know, before you take the speck out of your neighbor's eye, take it out of your own, and that's how it is with anger. It's like what you did. If you just stop doing that, I'll stop being angry. If you would just change, I'll stop being angry. But, but it says it right in the book that don't try and figure out what, how to take out the log in your neighbor's eye. It's in your own. Why? Because when there's anger in us, there is a block in our eye that we aren't seeing the truth. We aren't seeing the truth of our own pain. We aren't seeing the truth of what's really, what's the hurt that's really going on inside of us. And so we need to do introspection, not take it out on somebody. We need to let it out and do our inner process ourselves. And sometimes that requires us to ask ourselves a question and go deep and say, so um, why am I angry? You know, what is there, that person's words triggering inside of me that is creating this kind of emotional reaction? What in me needs to be healed? What in me feels like it's, it's missing or, or something that I'm needing? What in it me needs to be released? You know, because the truth is when we're afraid, we're coming from two places. Number one, we're afraid that we're going to lose something we have, like our happiness or control or peace of mind, or we're afraid we're not going to get what we want. And if you go a little deeper in releasing what's getting you angry and upset, at the heart of it, there is a fear that I will lose something I have or I will not get what I want. And so we can try and, and go yell at the other person. And somebody once said, if you speak with anger, you will make the best speech you'll ever regret. And um, so you can think that's an option. You think, but it isn't about the other person. It is about what do I need to heal? What do I need to release? What I need to clear? So Jill Rogers has been a friend of mine. Reverend Jill Rogers has been a friend of mine for her. 17, 18 years. We've been prayer partners for 17, 18 years. She's a great, great personal coach. One of the practices she likes to do is called letting off steam. And to practice it's done frequently, two, three times a week. And what it is, is she'll ask, she'll, you have to pick one area of your life, relationships or health or work or whatever. And she'll say, so, so tell me about what, what isn't feeling good in this area. And she asked 10 times. And you'll say, well, you know, this happened, and I got all upset, or this happened, blah, blah, blah. And it's so funny that as you begin to just clear out you release it, the clarity that comes that you realize it wasn't about what that person said at all. And that so often, after you begin to clear and release, you realize, I don't even need to have a conversation with them. Or that the conversation is much different than you thought it would be. So here's an example. This lady was angry that her husband was always telling her, honey, you know, you, you got to be on time. You're always late. So if they got something tomorrow, he'd say, you know, be, make sure tomorrow you're on time. In the morning, he'll say, you know, you're running behind. He'll say it so much, and she'd get angry. So they had this big fight. And then she did some releasing and releasing and realized it triggered a place in her where she didn't feel mature enough to be responsible. And so she felt like she was a child being chastised because he was saying, come on, be on time, be on time. And so she realized that and realized she, he was trying to help her. So the conversation didn't go back to be, hey, you said this to me, and why'd you do this? The conversation was this simple. She said to him, I appreciate that you want me to be on time, and I want me to be on time too. And what would really work well for me is if you just said to me once, about 15 minutes before, honey, we've got 15 minutes for us to be on time. It is amazing. I've been doing this practice, and I tell you, it's powerful. When you release it and own it and be willing to heal and look at what it's triggering in you, a lot of that goes away to the point you don't have to go back to confront them and give them a piece of your mind. And yes, sometimes we're going to make mistakes, but I guarantee you, this is a powerful and amazing practice if you are willing to do it. Anger is not a fun or pleasant experience, but I absolutely believe, you know, that it is our own inner work. It's not about what the other person is. We, anger is the opportunity to look at the speck in our own eye to the areas that we're blind to, to the hurt and the triggers we can't see, and to be willing to have a process of owning it, feeling it, releasing it, and healing it so that we can see clearly. So we can see the truth of who we are, the truth of who they are, and, and see all the good and not focus uh, on the negative and upsetting stuff in our lives. So this week, would you be willing to, when the anger comes, in that moment, breathe through it, 
Let it move through you and not tell yourself any stories about it. Not let it build up, but just own it. And don't feel shame. Just, it's a part of the deal. Just let it move through you. Secondly, is to move and own your spiritual identity and power. Don't feel like a victim. You're a creator. You're an amazing spiritual being. And if you accept full responsibility for your life, you will find the solution and the healing. And finally, is to name it, to own it, and to look at what's triggered inside of you and to do that releasing process, to, you know, to do that letting off steam. And with a spiritual intention, I guarantee you, you will come to a place of healing and wholeness. Anger is not a bad thing. It's our friend. It's a teacher. But you must be willing to feel and deal with it by yourself. God bless you all. All right, good stuff. So we're going to join with our kids, and they're going to, uh, we're all going to affirm together our prayer of protection. Okay, ready? Here we go. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Thanks, guys. Let's rise now as we sing our song of peace. Thanks, guys. Good stuff. Have a great day and a wonderful week.